Hi, I'm Emily, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a dung beetle trap. Let's start by talking about why you'd want to set up a trap and whether a live trap or a kill trap is best for your situation. Dung beetles are important for soil health, for returning nutrients back into the soil, and for controlling pests. Setting dung beetle traps can help you monitor which dung beetles are in your area. There are three main guilds or types of dung beetles, dwellers, rollers, and tunnelers. Rollers and tunnelers are most effective for returning nutrients back to the soils. It's always best to have a diverse group of dung beetles. Here are some common beetles that you might find in Kansas. How do you know if you should set a live trap or a kill trap? Live traps are best when there are not very many beetles around and you don't wanna deplete the population, or if there are threatened or endangered beetle species around like the American bearing beetle, or if you are looking to start a colony. If you already know that you have a well-established population of dung beetles, you can set a kill trap. Kill traps make for identifying species of beetles easier and allow for more flexibility in your schedule. The key to building any trap is a good bait. Most dung beetle species in Kansas are dung generalists. So you can use any kind of manure, but we recommend pig manure because it's the smelliest. When making your bait, all you're gonna need is some cheesecloth and your manure. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your dung and you're going to set it into the cheesecloth and roll it up like so. And then you can tie it off. And then when you put it in the trap, you can use a binder clip or something else to just clip it right to the side. And that's going to draw the beetles in. To build a kill trap, you're going to need two cups, some unscented soap, some water, some salt, and of course your bait. First step, uh, on your bottom cup, you're going to want to put a hole in the bottom for drainage in the event of rain. In your second cup, you want to make sure there's holes on the sides uh, to help with the drainage, and that cup is going to go inside of your other drainage cup. All right, next step, you're gonna wanna add one to two fingers deep of water to the bottom of the cup. So just like so. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. Next, we are going to take our unscented soap and just add about one drop. The soap is going to help break the water tension so the insects don't stay just on top of the water. Lastly, just add your bait and this is good to go. Building a live trap is a little more high tech. First, you're gonna need a bottle you can choose any size of bottle. The size that you choose is going to depend on how many beetles and what size beetles that you expect to catch. All you're going to do is cut right across the top and flip your top upside down to create a little funnel. And then you take your bait and just clip it right to the top. And voila, all done. To set the trap, you want to dig a hole so the trap fits low and tight in the ground. You wanna make sure it's low enough that even the smallest of beetles can access the trap. Once we have the hole done, we can put our trap right in, and then we are going to put the soil around to make sure that all dung beetles of every size can access the trap. In large open fields, sometimes it can be hard to find your trap the next day. So we recommend using things like flags to mark where you have set your traps. Additionally, if you have livestock around close to the area to help keep them safe and keep your trap from uh, getting trampled over, you can use cattle grates to set on top of it. You can also use things like goat panels to set up a little barrier around your trap. You just wanna keep in mind that any kind of fence or barrier you use could prevent dung beetles from getting in. So you wanna make sure that there's holes big enough 
for the dung beetles to go into. Additionally, to assess for dung beetle populations, you can just go through and look through piles of dung on your property. Here we have a roller that is currently making his brood ball. So this particular dung beetle is a canthon beetle and canthons are rollers and you can actually see him forming his little dung ball right there. We call dung balls brood balls and they will actually form those and roll them away, bury them underground and lay an egg in them. And that brood ball is going to have all of the nutrients that the egg is going to need once it hatches.